Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the new Elite Barbarians Rage deck that has went on a rampage to beat the best players in the world in the top 20. When you're always unleashing bandits, rail ghosts, battle rams, and elite barbarians that are raged up, you'll find plenty of opportunities to poke holes in your opponent's defenses. Whether it's with a massive connection that wins you the game instantly, or the magic archer piercing through your opponent's units and hitting their tower too, or the archer queen going invisible machine gun mode to delete your opponent's existence. This is one of the hardest decks to defend in the entire game, especially when the heal spirit keeps the battle ram and elite barbarians alive just long enough for you to take the tower, or the rage rushes your bandit dash or battle Ram charge to insane levels of speed. It's time to dash into ladder, steal all of our opponent's medals, and assert dominance. If you don't have Archer Queen, you can use Hunter or Phoenix. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. A whole lot of love to everyone that's using Creative Concert Tag to support the channel. All right, so this guy's gonna have Giant Skeleton and Lava Hound in his Mastery Banner. I feel like that is a card composition that I've never seen before, probably for good reason. It doesn't work so well. It's two clunky cards, one in the ground, one in the air. This guy is gonna go in for a Spear Goblin Hut, so I don't think it's gonna be either of those. I think you're trying to throw me for a loop, bro. I think you're running something completely different. Maybe like Rail Recruits if I had to guess, which neither is gonna be Lava Hound or Giant Skeleton. So it's in my best interest to remove that building as quickly as I can with our Archer Queen. And then, oh, oh, wow. I doubted you, bro. I really did doubt that. I did not expect you to have this deck. Oh my gosh, stop it. Stop this madness right now. You scoundrel. I'm going to have to go for a rage on my tower because it will crush all the skeletons and it will allow my princess tower to attack faster. She is just on those energy drinks and drinking up those skellies. Wow. Are you serious? Those were like one quarter HP elite barbarians and they melted a quarter of his tower. That doesn't make any sense to me, but I'll take it. Elite Barbarians are extremely good on defense to offense conversion if your opponent doesn't have enough elixir to defend. And that's what this deck does so well. It baits out a lot of your opponent's elixir. So I want to go in for a Rail Ghost in front of my Battle Ram. And the Rail Ghost will get pushed by the Battle Ram. <laughs> and it's just pretty fun to do. Usually, if they don't have a building, it will get pushed. And then I think I can go in for a Rage, so then we're going to be able to kill everything a little bit quicker. Potentially going for a bandit, depending on what goes down. But those barbarians, oh my gosh. They're like, we gotta do what the elite barbarians did. We gotta show them that we're stronger, we're better, we're more worthy. We deserve the elite title. Maybe I can go in for a bandit here. I think that's a good play, especially if you want to go in for a giant skeleton. We can kite the giant skeleton to the other side. Two. Wait, he messed up? He messed up so bad. That barbarian is working for me. He is a prime target. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, we want to go for a Royal Ghost here so I can still kite the Giant Skeleton. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is going to work. Maybe the Giant Skeleton doesn't go there. Okay, kind of working. This is not bad. It could have been so much worse. This is decent. Oh wait, why did I not kill the Giant Skeleton? The Royal Ghost is going on a journey back towards the bomb. It's like, Jake, I can't leave this tower. I'm emotionally detached, but I also need to make sure that I still have a feelings, even though I'm a ghost. All right, we're gonna go for an Archer Queen here, and I should make the most of this situation. I'm pretty sure the Phoenix is gonna get melted. Even if he tries to go in for a bomb and a tornado, this game is gonna explode in his face. 20 seconds remaining, no way for him to break through. He tried to go in for a last desperate graveyard, but he didn't even get a single skeleton on my tower. So getting into the game against K-Dog, he is not spamming us. So that's not really what we wanna see. We want you to start spamming as much as you possibly can. And you're gonna end up having a defensive structure with Spear Goblin Hut. Seems familiar, man. Why are there so many Spear Goblins in the meta right now? pretty weird. It is a good card. It is by far the best spawner in the game after Tombstone, if you even count Tombstone as a spawner. He probably Mega Knights on this. Oh, I just knew it. I felt it, you know? Sometimes you get that suspicion that your opponent's gonna have a Mega Knight, and you're just like, why did I drop the ability? Why did I waste the one Elixir Archer Queen? Did I actually expect to get value out of that? The answer is a resounding no, but I had to do it because I would have looked like a fool if I didn't drop it. So the guy is going to go in for something on the Magic Archer, or is he going to eat the hit? Magic Archer fires faster than the tower, much like a flying machine. Those two cards will always get hit on the tower, regardless how limited HP they are. Even if they get finished by the tower in one shot, they will always get that hit. The guy's going to have Cannon Cart. I think it's in my best interest to go Battle Ram and Royal Ghost, because he's not going to be back to Mega Knight. So we know that the Royal Ghost is going to splash on whatever bridge spam counters he's got. Like if he goes in for a Goblin Hut, it's not going to be a resounding success for our dude. And actually... What if I hit him up with the Heal Spirit and rage up my Royal Ghost? Is that going to work out? Oh, no, it didn't. Um, I overcommitted. 
and I might face the ramifications of this one. I have to go for a Leap Barbarians to melt everything. I did not expect him to end up having a Goblin Giant in this deck. Let's be real for a second. Did you guys think he would have a Mega Knight Goblin Giant deck? I thought we were fine. I was like, okay, he's not going to be able to afford his defense for a while. He's not going to be able to apply aggression that would be meaningful. And then he just goes and drops Shrek at the river. So we know he's going to Mega Knight here. I want to go for a Battle Ram on the other side and then continuously apply aggression. And maybe get some nice value here with the Royal Ghost. Uh, no, I'm not going to go Royal Ghost. I'll just rage it up for the Battle Ram. So the Barbarians can do even more damage. Also, a little bit of a love tap on the Fly Machine. So this is a chaotic game. That I wouldn't have anything else in Clash Royale. I enjoy chaos. That's where we thrive. So we're going to dine and dash and eat that machine and hopefully pop off like a rapid fire machine with our Archer Queen. So I'm going to go and do that and he's going to log and that's fine. Every time we bait out the log, it's good because we can go in for the Leap Barbarians with a Heal Spirit. Also, that's going to go on the wrong side. So I can do this. Jeez, dude, you don't even care about defending. It's against your religion to defend. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you guys just see him drop a Mega Knight at the river and then just ignore the Elite Barbarians? This guy is the definition of a wild child, and I love it. That is incredible. If you ever play against a Mega Knight spawner player, this is generally how they play. They just unfiltered, uncanny aggression at all points in time. So, please let me kill the Goblin Giant. I need this. If we go for a Ghost in the middle, it's going to wander towards the tower, and it's not going to get discovered for the longest period of time. Wait, we baited out a building that costs 5 Elixir. That's even better for me. Okay, we know he's going to Mega Knight, so I can't really support this Archer Queen. I'm not going to click the ability, because last time I did, and it was worthless. We learned our lesson. <laughs> Wait, it even got a hit on the tower? What? Yo, that's incredible. He dropped it late, and it's, I guess, his fate to always give us value. So, the Heal Spirit and the Rage from the E-Barbs is just doing so much work. I think I can go Archer Queen in the middle and just be an absolute animal. Yo, that Archer Queen just tanked for the Leap Barbarian. Can I say that was calculated? Can we just all lie to everyone here and say that that was the best play ever and I, I completely knew that that was going to happen? <laughs> wow, that Archer Queen giving the Leap Barbarian extra health was the best teammate possible. And even though we were an absolute underdog in the game, when I threw my tower away, we were able to overcome K-Dog. Hey, we got a game against Echo. What's Echo? Echo? What's Echo? Echo. What's up, dude? So, we're going to hear your echoes and screams as soon as you realize how disgusting our deck is. So, I want to go in for a Heal Spirit in the back, and as soon as we see Goblins, we feel like we're probably playing against a very fast cycle deck, likely with Archer Queen, Log, and Mortar, or Cannon, depending on what version you're playing. So, the way that we play this matchup is we try to bait out the Cannon. Oh, that was such a good Dark Goblin, because it forces out my Archer Queen ability. I don't know if we're going to be able to snipe the Dark Goblin in time, and I don't even get a hit on the tower with our Queen. That is appalling. What? A ghost! But it's okay. We can still make it work. Our Bridge Bam deck can find damage even in the most, I don't know, unreliable situations. You can still make it happen. We're going for a Battle Ram here, and then I think I need to go in for a Magic Archer so the Goblins don't put in too much damage. Maybe dropping it off to the side so the Magic Archer doesn't take anything. And we do find out that he's got Cannon in this version of his deck. So it's weird to see Mighty Miner without Log Bait. I don't know. I'm just so used to seeing it with Log Bait. The Barbs are putting in work, though. Wow. Is he going to try to activate King Tower with that Magic Archer? Nah, he doesn't even care. Do we E-Barbs on top of the Dark Goblin? I think that's going to be our best bet, because the Miner tickles the tower. However, the E-Barbs do major damage. So he's probably going to go in for Goblins. I'm going to rage this up, just to be able to kill them a little bit quicker. He's going to go in for his Battle Ram counter, too. He doesn't have Battle Ram counters now. With the Cannon out of cycle, we need to make sure that we make use of this. The Cannon will not be able to go and pull our Battle Ram. So if I Battle Ram in the back and I build up a big push with the Cannon decomposed, and it's not double elixir. He probably won't be able to cycle back to it in time. He doesn't even have the three card card cycle with the Mighty Miner in his hand right now. So I think we can go in for a Royal Ghost here, expect him to go Mighty Miner and then Magic Archer on top of it. There's that Mighty Miner. There it is. We're gonna make him click the ability when he doesn't want to too. And then we're gonna have Prime Real Estate targeting the Dark Goblin. Beautiful, baby. That's exactly the way that we wanted to play. When your opponent doesn't have cannon, that's when you capitalize on your offensive plays. And because you've got E-Barbs, and you also end up having like Archer Queen, you have multifarious ways of baiting out their cannon in their building that they're supposed to keep in their hand. We could poison and log and finish off the Archer Queen, and if he does that, then he won't have the log for our Heal Spirit. So the game plan right now is to go for a Royal Ghost here, go for the Archer Queen ability in the left-hand side, Hopefully force out the log there, and then we can maybe go through with our heal spirit afterward. The Archer Queen's still alive. The battle room is about to connect to the tower, and then we're going to rage up Barbarians. And they're like, yo, I'm the elite Barbarians now, Jake. 
Let's freaking go. We can keep everything here and make sure there's a lot more for our opponent to fear. I only got one shot, to be honest. I expected a lot more. <laughs> I was gassing that up and hyped up a lot more than that. But it's all good. We go Archer Queen in the back and the side that he doesn't want to poison. If he wants to finish off my Archer Queen, well, he's able to poison Log, but he's not going to get tower damage on the left-hand side. Then we batter him in the other side, and we try to snipe the cannon early with the Magic Archer. If you snipe the cannon early with the Magic Archer, they have nothing for the batter him, and then your batter him gives you a lot of damage. So that's what the game plan is, and that's how I like to play this matchup. That is what I learned from professional players, and obviously, as you guys can see, that's how I escorted my batter him towards the tower. It worked out really nicely there. He's going to expect me to try to go Magic Archer. I'm not going to do it because it's too predictable. So instead, I'm going to go in for Leap Barbarians and split them because he's probably going for a Miner. Then I'm going to Archer Queen immediately on the Dark Goblin. Then I'm going to go in for a Field Spirit to go and pull back the Mighty Miner so they can't lock into my tower. And then I think we can just go and click the Archer Queen ability because it's hard for him to defend this. And then we can go for a Batterman on the other side. He misses the log. Oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. We have both towers and we have all the power. He left the game because he just did not want to play it anymore. This deck is so toxic that you destroy your opponent's mental before you destroy their towers. And after crushing that control deck, we're 8,000 in the world. Hey, we got another game against someone with a Mega Knight banner. So we got to make this happen. Y'all already know the deal. I'm going to go for Archer Queen in the back just because it's kind of one of the most difficult cards to counter for most opponents. He's going to have a Skeleton Barrel, so it probably is a Mega Knight deck. It's likely going to be a Mega Knight bait deck. So I can't clump up too much stuff. Dual lane pressure at all points is the only way to play this matchup. So I am planning on him Mega Knighting on top of the Archer Queen, and he doesn't. He's going to Mega Knight on the other side. Okay, that was a smart decision on his end. He is going to eat a bunch of damage from the Archer Queen. So I have an advantage, and I want to stick with it. So I'm going to go for a Bandit, and I'm also going to follow up with the Royal Ghost exactly on top of the Mega Knight to finish it off as quickly as we can. Okay, not easy, but I can go in for a Rage. I think that the Rage is going to do enough damage to kill the Mega Knight. You guys might not think that that's very fair, and I would agree with you. Mega Knight dies to Rage because Rage does damage sometimes. If you time it perfectly and you're in the right spot like me, then, you know, it works out. So, we're in a bad spot overall because he's up more damage, but at the same time, we have some options. We can go left or right, and he has done absolutely nothing on our right-hand side. So, we're going to go for the Archer Queen again on the right-hand side, so then if he goes in for a Mega Knight and he crushes the Queen, then he's going to be counter-pushing the wrong lane. He's going to go and spam Goblins directly into Elite Barbarians. I don't know if I kill the Miner as fast as we want, so those Goblins will put in some work. But there is one huge benefit here. He has to go in for Bats on the Elite Barbarians. So I can go for a Magic Archer and predict that. He's probably going to go in for a Mega Knight on top of the Archer Queen. I don't have enough Elixir for everything. Wait, wait. He's letting the Archer Queen lock into the tower? He thinks the Zap is enough? No, dude, that's real rough and tough. That is not enough. We can go in for a Bandit last second. If you guys noticed how late I dropped my Bandit, I tried to drop it to the last possible second so then I could make sure that I could keep everything alive a little bit longer and maybe have an opportunity to go and pummel his other bridge spam. It didn't work out as planned, but it was okay. It was something I can vibe with. We can go in for a Royal Ghost here, and then I can go in for a Battle Ram, and we can push the Royal Ghost and then Heal Spirit. And because I ate so much damage, I might be up enough to allow the Barbarians and the Royal Ghost to take the other tower. So the important thing to do is when you can't defend, don't defend. Try to just take the consolation prize and take the towers afterwards. That's what I roll with, at least. We can go in for Elite Barbarians on the Mega Knight. Ooh. Yeah, this is weird. I didn't expect him to go for a Skeleton Barrel there. He's really risking all of his Elixir right now. So can the Archer Queen take the tower? Can the Royal Ghost force out more Elixir in the right-hand side? These are questions I don't have answers to. Let's go keep spamming and see what we can do. All right, so I want to rage this up so then maybe I can take the tower on the other side. The Magic Archer locked into the tower twice. Oh my gosh. Wait. Archer Queen, you got to put enough work in the left-hand side. You have to do it right now. I don't know if I can do it. I really need it right now. Please let me win. No. <laughs> Very well played by our opponent. He's barely going to edge it out. I can't get the Magic Archer to lock on. Even though I've tried to drop it in the corner, there was no geometry angles left over. Very talented Mega Knight player. The game was going back and forth, and I really thought I had a good shot of winning at the end, but my Magic Archer decided to fail math class. All right, we got a game against the Alpha Gang Gang. So we're going to see how many skeletons he's going to try to surround me with or goblins. I feel like he's just going to have an assortment of gangs. So we want to go in for maybe like a band in the back just to keep up the pressure at the very start and figure out what his deck is. Usually when we see Princess, I mean, it could be a Hog Rider deck, but usually it's going to be Log Bait. So I think it's in my best interest to go for the Archer Queen here and then snipe the Princess using our Magic Archer. That will give us more damage than his Princess could ever even hope of getting. So pretty good for us. I don't even want to click the Archer Queen ability because I think we melt the Mighty Miner. 
Oh, I don't love this, but I need to kill the cannon. And I don't want to take damage on my archer queen, so it's worth it for us to go in for that. We're going to force out a log now where we wouldn't be able to force that out earlier. Oh, he's going to have fire spirit. Wow, I did not expect that. I genuinely did not expect our dude to have a fire spirit in this deck. So that was unfortunate. We do take some damage from the goblin barrel, but it's all good. We can make this work. If I go for a bandit in the back, I don't think that would be our best way of winning. So I think I need to pair it with something else as well. Maybe I can go in for like a bandit and then a battle ram and have the bandit soak up the mighty minor damage. And then I can go archer queen on the princess and apply dual lane pressure here. That's generally the way that you work your way through control decks that have rocket. If you stack up too much stuff on the same side, you're just going to get your world rocked. Yo, he's going to log and bounce everything back. I think that if I had dropped the heal spirit there, it would have been pretty appealing to heal up the Archer Queen. But I made the right decision. If I had dropped that, then I think I would have dropped a lot of HP on my tower because I wouldn't have been able to afford the Magic Archer on the Princess. And I also would have wasted the heal spirit because it would have just gotten logged. Yo, the Archer Queen's stacking up a lot of damage there on the right-hand side. So if he log bait Goblin Barrels, we just want to go Elite Barbarians in front of our tower most of the time. The bad thing about that is he's going to be able to go in for a Fire Spirit and have it connect to the E-Barbs too. Jeez, man. Well played. Well played. Okay, so I want to be able to snipe that cannon with uh, either the Magic Archer or have the Royal Ghost walk across the river, float, and then just crush the cannon. It's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, but what we're hoping to have happen here. He's going to go in for the Mighty Miner. I'm going to go in for the Archer Queen ability, and then that should be able to kill the Princess. That's quite good for us overall. He's going to lose his Mighty Miner to a Bandit. Nani? So it's not going to be able to do as much damage. We're going to go for a Royal Ghost in the back and make sure that we minimize the amount of damage he gets. And then, hmm. If I go batter him in the back because the cannon is already out of cycle, this seems pretty good for me. Seems really promising, actually. Because we know that we can go in for a Magic Archer and the Princess. We know that we can go for a Rage on the Battle Ram. And he's not going to be ready for that because most people are not prepared for a Rage Bridge Spam deck. I love it. So we're going to go for an Archer Queen ability right now because he doesn't have Mighty Miner in Cycle, so it's very hard for him to stop it. He's probably going to go for a Log, so that means that we can go for Free Rain and Leap Barbarian's Pain. I want to go E-Barbs, and I want to go in for Heal Spirit here as well because he probably can't afford a Rocket here, especially if he's going to go in for a Goblin Barrel. I just want to keep up the pressure because if he goes in for a Goblin Barrel right now, I think the E-Barbs will take out his entire tower, or the Bandit will. I, I just think that something will do enough at this point because we are up quite a bit the royal ghost is coming through and we'll see what he's able to do we're going to go in for another archer queen at the river and then i'm going to go and click the archer queen ability if that locks onto the tower it, it will be gg i'm going to go in for a royal ghost the archer queen locks on the tower for a lot of damage one more hit it doesn't give it to me oh come on that's rigged bro we need more than that all right you guys know the deal we're going to continuously rage on the tower because the bandit or the barbarians will take the tower if it's raged up the bandit dashes slightly faster and he wasn't able to get the skeletons down in time so despite having one of the most defensive decks in the game with a quick card cycle of skeletons it still wasn't enough to stop the bandit dash the raged up dash breaks the speed limit and breaks any potential of the opponent reacting fast enough like subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day